How's it going guys? It's Ren, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a super powerful AR setup that you guys could be using right now in Back for Blood. But before we get into that, if you're new here to the channel, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more awesome Back for Blood content, just like this. Also, make sure to check out the link to my Discord server. It's going to be down in the description below. You guys can use it to find teammates to play Back for Blood with. So if you guys are in some dire need of teammates, make sure to come check out the Discord server. And without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, so here we are in the deck building menu in Back to Blood. This is going to be the complete deck list. So if you guys are just looking to copy and paste the deck, now is your time to do so. But for the remainder of this video, I'm just going to be talking about why every card is where it is and just what role every card plays in the deck and just everything like that. Now, the objective of this deck is fairly simple. We're just an assault rifle deck, which means we are wanting to stay at about medium distance from all of our enemies. We don't want to be quite far range because we don't have the range that something like a sniper has. And we don't exactly want to take the fight super close because because we don't have many advantages like something like an SMG or a shotgun would have. Want to stay like a median distance away because that's where assault rifles excel. And things that we're going to, you know, particularly try to improve on are the reload speed, the aim speed, accuracy, and obviously damage. Now, number one is going to be Cold Brew Coffee, which gives us plus 15% reload speed, 25% aim speed, weapon swap speed, and use speed. Now, the reason that this card is all the way up in the number one spot as our starter card is because this card improves two of the categories that I said we are going to mainly be fixing on in the deck. And this card also gives us use speed with absolutely no downside because use speed got so much better once the Tunnels of Terror DLC came in because of all the webs and the hives. Use speed became astronomically better because use speed is the category that you need to make you know tearing through webs go faster and just anything to make that go any faster is where we want to be plus you speed comes into effect with just a lot of other things like it did before the dlc came in like reviving teammates saving survivors opening you know crates just anything that requires a progress bar now number two is gonna be line them up which gives us plus 10 percent effective bullet range 15 percent recoil control and 25 percent bullet penetration and aim speed now, this is in here because not only does this give us aim speed, which is one of the categories I said that, you know, we obviously need to improve on. It also gives us a better effective bullet range and recoil control. Now, accuracy is one of the things I mentioned that we need to fix on and effective bullet range allows us to play just a little bit farther from our enemies because I mean, just the farther we are from our enemies, the safer we're going to be. We just don't want to be 6,000 feet away trying to snipe them. Now, number three is going to be ammo belt, which gives us plus 50% ammo capacity and plus 15% reload speed. Now, the main reason that we're playing Ammo Belt over something like Ammo Mule is because of that reload speed. I do think that just, you know, 75% ammo capacity is a little much for ARs. Like, I know they eat through ammo, but I mean, there's just other cards you can be playing that, you know, give you ammo and some other type of value. And I mean, in this deck, it's going to be Tactical Vest because this gives us that extra ammo that we need. And it gives us that plus 10% damage with Assault Rifles and LMGs. I just personally think that the 15% reload speed that you get off of Ammo Belt is just, you know, so much much extra value for AR specifically that it's just enough reason to not play ammo meal and you don't want to play ammo pouch because 25% ammo capacity just simply isn't enough and there's no reason to play ammo pouch and ammo belt because I mean tactical vest is just better than ammo pouch and I mean both of these combined are only going to give you as much ammo as ammo meal would give you now number four is going to be padded suit which gives us plus 10% damage resistance plus five health and minus 20% stamina efficiency as the downside now the reason that we're going back to playing padded suit rather than something like I don't know amped up is because you know with the DLC coming in a lot of cards got changed and amped up is one of the cards that got changed and amped up kind of sucks now it's just not very good because this card you know not only just does less health now it also just does regular health and not temporary health and that makes this card just not very good and I think that padded suit is just back to where the AR decks need to be because stamina really doesn't matter and you know just Turtle Rock has just came out and said speed earning is just not where the game needs to be. So getting that stamina efficiency cut off isn't exactly the worst thing in the world. And this is just the best protection you can get without some sort of just like ridiculous downside. Like, yeah, motorcycle helmet, you know, does more than padded suit, but it also disables our ADS and, you know, motorcycle jacket isn't as good as padded suit. So there's just no other better option in my opinion. Now, number five is going to be hyper focused, which gives us plus 50% weak spot damage and minus 40% move speed while shooting or melee attacking. 
Now, I usually advise against people playing this card because of the move speed debuff. And, you know, I usually tell people just to play Reckless Strategy. But the reason why I threw Hyper Focus in this deck is because I wanted a card that would give enough damage output that, you know, the next few slots in the deck could actually just not have nothing to do with damage and, you know, just boost other categories. So that's the main reason we're playing it. I mean, the downside still sucks, but we just deal with it. Now, number six is going to be Front Sight Focus, which gives us plus 20% accuracy, 10% weak spot damage, and 15% percent aim speed and number seven is going to be wide mouth magwell which gives us plus 30 percent reload speed but minus five percent damage resistance as the downside now both of these are just really really good in the deck because they they increase other percentages that we need with the exception of damage like you know we have extra accuracy and aim speed and reload speed and that's why i played hyper focus so i can dedicate some cards that just don't only do damage or do damage plus another thing you know just so we can get some other categories going too Number eight is going to be large caliber rounds, which gives us plus seven and a half percent bullet damage and plus 200 percent bullet penetration. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Just after having two not damage cards, we obviously need another damage card. And I do think large caliber rounds is in the upper echelon of damage cards. Like, I think this is one of the more solid ones we can pick right now. And especially with hyper focus being out of the picture and line them up being out of the picture because we've already picked them. I do think large caliber rounds is just where we need to be. It's just going to give us that extra damage output that we need. Now, number nine is going to be Screwdriver, which gives us plus 50% use speed and plus 10% stamina. Now, this card, in my opinion, is just like an all-star that can, should just go in just about every deck because, I mean, use speed is just universally good. Like, use speed isn't something that, you know, only some gun types are going to, you know, benefit from. Because, like I was saying earlier, anything that requires a progress bar, use speed is going to make go faster, such as opening crates, picking up, you know, survivors, picking your teammates up, going through the webbing and hives, all that stuff, use speed speed is fully incorporated into and on top of that we also get plus 10 percent stamina which is you know gonna let us punch one or two more times or you know give us that extra second of running that we need just that little little edge we need and the most important thing that makes this card really good is that it has absolutely no downsides because i mean there's just a lot of cards that do a lot less and have downsides you know what i mean like take a look at a card like wide mouth magwell that just simply gives plus 30 percent reload speed but has a downside like i get it it's not that bad of a downside but this has nothing so i feel like that value is just too good to be overlooked now number 10 is going to be tactical vest which gives us plus 30 percent rifle ammo capacity and plus 10 percent damage with assault rifles and lmgs now as i was saying earlier this is primarily in here just to give us that extra ammo that we're you know lacking from ammo belt but even though it's not like particularly needed just the fact that we're getting extra value you know just extra damage from this tactical vest rather than just ammo i feel like is enough to play it because i would rather be safe than sorry with my ammo because usually when you're playing with you know like bots they're just going to keep dropping ammo for you over and over and over again and you know ammo isn't really something you need to worry about but i mean if you're playing online with real people then i mean ammo is definitely something you need to be worried about and i would personally rather be safe than sorry with ammo i'd rather have too much than too little now number 11 is going to be reckless strategy which gives us plus 30 percent weak spot damage and minus five percent damage resistance as the downside now the reason that this card is all the way down here is simply because it is just a worse hyper focus and out of all the damage categories that i could increase you know out of like regular damage bullet penetration weak spot damage i personally think that you know maxing out on your weak spot damage as quick as humanly possible is just where you need to be so I'm choosing my next damage card to be a weak spot damage card rather than just a overall damage card. Because I mean, for me personally, I think the main thing that you have to take into account is special infected. Most of the commons are gonna die within like, you know, two to three shots. You know, that's assuming they're like fully mutated and everything like that. And if not, they're just gonna die in one shot. They're no biggie. But you, I mean, you need to think about like the special infected and the main thing is your time to kill on the special infected, not the commons. So weak spot damage is the one that is geared towards special infected. So that's why I play it before all the other ones. Now, number 12 and 13 are gonna be high vis sights and shooting gloves. High vis sights is gonna give us plus 30% aim speed and shooting gloves is gonna give us 25% weapon swap speed, 15% recoil control and accuracy. Now, these two cards are kind of doing the same thing that front sight focus and wide mouth magwell was doing. I got a really, really good damage card and I feel like reckless strategy is just strong enough in the later game that I feel like I don't have to, you know, pick a damage card for my next few card picks and high vis sights and shooting gloves are going to increase all of those other categories that aren't damage that we need increased just like front sight focus and wide mouth magwell do. 
And number 14 and 15 are going to be serving the same purpose, that being DPS, number 14 being Shredder, and 15 being Red and Slayer. Now, Shredder says each bullet hit causes the target to take 1% increased damage for 3 seconds, and it stacks up to 15%. And Red and Slayer says it gives us plus 20% weak spot damage. Now, these are both simply in here just for, you know, like a finale type situation, just so we can kill things as quick as humanly possible. Because if when we pick Red and Slayer, you know, if we combine Red and Slayer plus Plus reckless strategy plus hyper focus that is plus 100 weak spot damage and you know that's going to be essentially saying you're doing double damage to all the special infected so obviously that's where we want to be and shredder is just one of the best damage cards for decks that are based around fully automatic guns because obviously as you know each bullet just keeps repeatedly hitting everything that means they're going to be taking increased damage and shredder pretty much guarantees as long as you're hitting stuff in their weak spots nothing outside of like a boss is going to live for more than 15 bullets Let's well, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Make sure to leave a comment down below telling me any deck changes that you guys would make. And as always, if you happen to enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more awesome Back for Blood content just like this. Also, make sure to check out the link to my Discord server. It's going to be down in the description below. You guys can use it to find teammates to play Back for Blood with. So if you guys are in some dire need of teammates, make sure to come check out the Discord server. And until next time, it's Ben Red, and I'll see you guys in the next video.